everybody, it's me, Luna TK. And on this channel, I tend to make videos about things that I adore and that I'm really passionate about. But recently I've discovered there is something I have yet to include on this channel that is a major part of who I am. What is that, you ask? Well, it's the fact that I'm a major Swifty. I've been listening to her since I was 13 years old. And honestly, she's what inspired me to start making videos in the first place. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts, she's cheer captain and I'm on the bleachers. My first video was actually teardrops on my guitar, but I couldn't find that one to show you guys. It's totally fine though, because it was really, really cringy. Now, the reason I'm a Swifty, there's a lot of reasons, but a lot of it has to do, in my case, with nostalgia, and also just the fact that she's a really, really, really good lyricist. And quite frankly, just from everything that I've seen, she's just really likable. One of the biggest reasons I'm a Swifty is actually gonna have to do with the top 10 choices of my favorite songs, but you'll have to wait until number one for that. Stick to the end of this video to find out exactly what that's about. But overall, she just seems really funny. Get out of my house! I'm not sure where that came from. Everything that she does is just is super creative. She does, she's not afraid to poke fun at herself. I like writing songs about douchebags who cheat on me, but I'm not gonna say that in my monologue. She's not afraid to call out the haters. She's not afraid to take just all the garbage that's been thrown at her and to turn it into art. And I just really, really respect that. There's so much I could talk about in terms of the topic that is Taylor Swift. <laughs> So I think I will be making this into a multiple video series if you guys are interested in that. I figured though to start, to just jump in, I would do my top 10 favorite Taylor Swift songs and why they're my favorite songs. Now narrowing down my top 10 was extremely, extremely difficult because I know the lyrics to like every single Taylor Swift song. So how am I supposed to say that like any one of them is my absolute favorite? I kind of just went on Spotify and just started like going through and be like, okay, this one, this one's gotta go on there, this one's gotta go on there. And I made a list of like 15 songs. So I'll probably have some honorable mentions in there, <laughs> but I'm gonna do my top 10. Let me just start by saying that this is my top 10. This has nothing to do with like how great this is like across the board for everybody. This is just a lot of, a lot of this has to do with like personal meaning behind the songs for myself, as well as just like what they did for me during the time that they came out, things like that. So it's, it's a lot of personal reasons as to these top 10 being in my top 10, which I'll get into. So yeah, let's, let's do this. Okay. So coming in at number 10, I have, <laughs> I'm looking at my list right now and I'm just laughing because like I don't know how I don't know how I'm gonna do this I have to have a song in here that's a bop and a song in here that for personal reasons is in here and I'm gonna get into it but <laughs> you might think this is silly but number 10 has got to be look what you made me do why well <sighs> reputation and and look what you made me do came out during a time when I just really needed a song with attitude. Reputation came out in uh, towards the end of 2017 and 2017 and 2018 were years that were exceptionally hard for me. Um, I was dealing with a lot of things in my life, um, a lot of drama and my mother-in-law had just passed away and I was just dealing with a lot of things that were making me really, really angry. I was just a very angry and very hurt person during that time. And I just needed a song to lift me up. And Look What You Made Me Do was the song that did that. At first, I first heard it. Upon first listen, I did not like it. I was like, this does not sound like Taylor. Like, what is this? And then, like, what got to me was just, like, I loved her music video for it. The music video calls out has so many easter eggs that it's brilliant it has a million easter eggs like there's videos on it just go go watch videos about like how many easter eggs are in this music video because there's so many and honey i rose up from the dead i do it all the time i've had so many times in my life when i've had to like reinvent myself it's just something that i tend to do like when i've gone through some hurt like i will just 
I'll reinvent myself in some ways. And, and I've, I've had a history of doing that. And so having a song about doing that basically is really empowering. I listen to it when I go to the gym. I listen to it when I'm just trying to have a good laugh. It's just a badass song. <laughs> Like, I feel like, like, yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's just a song that if you want to feel like, like a badass, Reputation is the album for that. And Look What You Made Me Do definitely cheered me up re when I needed it really, really badly. Also, like, the, like, sound effect, like, the production quality of, like, some of the things that happened in that song. Like, the sound. Look What You Made Me Do is also just a song where she kind of just pokes fun at herself and I, I love when she does that. She's just like a strong enough person to be able to do that, which is really cool. Coming in at number nine, we have This Is Me Trying. So this song hits me incredibly hard. Um, I sometimes can't listen to this one just because of just the content and how emotional this song makes me. As somebody who has dealt with like mental health issues and depression and, um, and anxiety and things this this song kind of hits the nail right on the head it's just basically a song about fighting your inner demons and trying your best and sometimes your best is taylor put it the best like taylor honestly said it the best way there's just so many good one-liners in this song like they told me all of my cages were mental so i got wasted like all my potential and my words shoot to kill when I'm mad. Like, I'm like that. Like, when I'm mad, I go for the jugular. I I say things that I don't mean. And it can be really hurtful when I'm mad. And I tend to regret it right afterwards. Pouring out my heart to a stranger, but I didn't pour the whiskey. Like, basically, somebody trying. It may look like they're doing the bare minimum, but they're, they're trying their hardest. No one pats them on the back every day but every day they are actively fighting something mm. but there are so many days that nobody gives them credit for that yeah and so how often must somebody who's in that sort of internal struggle must want to say to everyone in the room you this have no idea trying. how yeah so that song just it just i don't know for me lyrically it is in my top 10 because it resonates with me quite a bit um much like my number eight. My number eight is The Archer. The Archer is basically a song about having anxiety in a relationship. I mean, she starts the song up saying combat, I'm ready for combat. Basically, like, she's got these walls up and she's ready to fight. Even if she is in a loving relationship, she's afraid of losing it basically in the whole song she keeps saying like who could ever leave me but who could stay you know it's talking about a lot of that kind of like self-hatred but what gets me the most i think in that particular song is that song not only like lyrically does it kind of talk about anxiety but also it talks about like just the way that the Somebody mentions that in that song, the beat never drops. So basically, you're waiting for the other shoe to drop in this relationship the whole time, and it never happens. It, and, and you're expecting it to eventually like kind of pick up, and it just it, it doesn't. But what really gets me is the part right before the bridge that sounds kind of like an anxiety attack almost. It gets more and more intense that as she sings it, she says like, because they see right through me, they see right through me, they see right through, can you see right through me, they see right through me, they see right through me, I see right through me, I see right through me. And she kind of says it as she gets, and it gets more and more intense, like the, emotion, like the emotional buildup, like as it goes. And then she go, goes into the bridge. And the the line that always makes me cry, the, I, at, the, um, at the heiress tour, because I went to the heiress tour, of course, and I was actually able to make it, thank goodness. Um, the part that got me emotional was where she sings, like, because all of my enemies started out friends. And for me, like, that's really relatable because anytime that I have had any sort of enemies or, like, issues, you know, with somebody who ends up not liking me, it always was somebody who I once was close with. And that's always been really hard for me to oftentimes get closure on. And so, like, that part, when she sang that part at the concert, I started crying. <laughs> and yeah, that's why The Archer is my, my number eight. Number seven. So, <laughs> these, like, 
these past few, it was kind of a little bit of a trend, and I'm just noticing that. But number seven is antihero. Now, some of this is actually because the fact that um, my kids really love this song. Eliana, like, the song will come on, but he played this at her fourth birthday party, the kids' bop version, um, which is a little cringe, but hey, it's kids a little more kid-friendly for a bunch of four-year-olds. <laughs> I really like it because my kids really enjoy it, but also it's, it's again, another one of those really vulnerable songs. I'm a sucker for the the vulnerable emotional type of songs as you as as you can kind of see from some of these where it's about mental health or about self like you know trying to figure out your own issues with yourself it's another song about anxieties over one's shortcomings and like the archer she's afraid of being abandoned because she doesn't think she's a good person she feels like her life is too big to handle and that eventually she's going to lose everything that she cares about everybody's going to betray her it's a catchy song for my kids and it's an introspective song with deep lyrics for me so i say that's a win now number six is actually kind of a change of pace. <laughs> Number six is actually Betty. I love Betty. I love that song so much. I, I don't know what it is. It's something about just this whole thing about young, naive love. It reminds me of when I was a kid. It reminds me of me being in Betty's situation and being stupid enough to take that dumb boy back. It's just a funny song too because like I I hate the guy. I and the, 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 he's the main character James. He he screwed up. It's it's a song about a, the main guy James and he screwed up with the love of his life and now he's begging to have her back and there's something really satisfying about that. <laughs> And that's really all I can say. I love the tune. I think it's a really, like, a really pretty tune. I like, it's different because, like, she uses harmonica in it, which is not something I feel like she's used in other songs. I feel like out of the trio, because this, this song comes from a trio of songs, the trilogy, right? We got Betty, August, and Cardigan. Out of those three, this one seems to hit me the most. The song of, like, young love and yearning and just being stupid <laughs> and making mistakes. Like, I'm only 17, I don't know anything, but I know I miss you. And it's just, it's just cute. It's just a cute song, even though I hate James. <laughs> like, I feel like it gives us a little bit more insight to the whole story too, from even like telling more about what happened with Betty. Cause in Cardigan, it, it's Cardigan's from Betty's perspective, but in Cardigan, we don't get to hear things like the fact that she switched her homeroom just to get away from this guy, you know? Um, I, I don't I don't want to make assumptions about why you switched your homeroom, but I think it's because of me. And that's like, oh, <laughs> Just some of the lines in the song are just... Uh. Like, he's clearly the villain in the story out of all the three. He's the one who basically cheated on Betty in the trilogy. He left Betty or he cheated on Betty over the summer to be with August and then... Or Augustine... And now he realizes he's messed up and he wants Betty back and he's, you know, distraught. And there's just something really satisfying about it. <laughs> it's just a very satisfying song. I feel like it has other things too where it, like, it, it brings back like standing in your cardigan, kissing in my car again. And he's like, he's referencing the cardigan from her song Cardigan. I feel like it gives the most details about what happened in the story. You know, like, I feel like amongst the three of them, this is the one... I could picture a lot in August, too, but this one, I feel like I can really picture what's going on. And maybe it's because I was in a similar situation when I was young, from Betty's perspective. I just think it's a very fun song, and so that's why. It's never a skip for me. I can never skip Betty, and that's why it's my number six. Coming in at number five is... Champagne Problems. I love Champagne Problems. I think it's a wonderful song. I really loved the songs from Folklore and Evermore that were just like these like stories that she kind of made up. I'm really a big fan of those because it's like reading a book, but it's in a song. <laughs> and this is another one of those that is definitely like 
it's just so good. <laughs> what I really love about Champagne Problems, I, 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 I love, I love sad songs. <laughs> I do. I love sad songs. I also really love the fact that, like, it's kind of a double play on words. So, like, champagne problems. So, like, champagne problems would be, like, basically, like, a first world problem, right? So, like, but also champagne problems because the family preemptively opened up the bottle of champagne to celebrate this engagement that never actually came to pass. Again, it's one of those songs that's, like, referencing mental health. The girl doesn't think that she's necessarily worthy of the guy because, well, she's, amongst other reasons, but, like, she's, it kind of references the fact that she thinks that she's belongs in an insane asylum. This dorm was once a madhouse. Oh, well, I made the joke that it's made for me. This also gets a little personal, but I had a friend who got a divorce very quickly after getting married, and it kind of threw off our friend dynamic a little bit like our friendship group dynamic. Um, so it just makes me think of like Evergreen, our group of friends, don't think we'll say that word again. And it just makes me think about like how ever since that relationship fell through, it kind of like our group of friends hasn't been quite the same. So there's kind of like some of that that kind of sticks with me too. <laughs> I don't even know if I should be talking about this on YouTube, but I am. And on that note, I'm going to go ahead and jump into number four. Four. Number four is here strictly because of nostalgia reasons. Because it reminds me of my best friend, um, aka my little sister, aka Michelle, who we've had who I've had on videos before. One of the first videos I ever made, you saw at the beginning of this. You can take a guess at what this song might be. Yes, it's You Belong With Me. You Belong With Me is one of my favorites because that was one of the first videos I ever made. And so when we went to the Eras Tour concert, we ended up recreating some stuff from that music video that we made. And so that's really the biggest reason. 2009. She wears short skirts, I wear t-shirts. She Versus. 2023. We love you, Taylor. Hi, I'm back. And isn't it appropriate that I'm wearing red tones. I got the pink back in my hair because this next song, my number three, is sometimes it's my number one to be honest. It's my number three because the other two like have to be my number one and number two. My number three is all too well 10 minute version. Yes, it's got to be the 10 minute version because you don't get the full story in the original. So the 10 minute version, Taylor's version, beautiful okay so why do I love this song so much I love it for similar reasons as to why I love Betty so much is that it reminds me of young passionate love it just I love stories like that and it's just it's got I love sad songs and it's uh, I love songs that I can listen to on a car ride. I, I like to go for long car rides. One of my favorite things to do is like bring my kids out on a nap run and I just put them in the car. I let them sleep. Sometimes it's raining and it's beautiful and I just go for a long drive. And I just like to have songs that I listen to while I'm on these drives. Songs that make me, that put me into stories. Hence why I like some of the other songs that I've already mentioned. But this one, it really, really does. This song in particular, like Betty, is really descriptive about what's happening to her, to, to Taylor, or the, the character of this story. I mean, she starts off the song just by already saying, like, I walked through the door with you, the air was cold, but something about it felt like home somehow. And, like, I left my scarf there at your sister's house and you've still got it in your drawer even now. 
And, like, she talks about, like, getting, get, singing in the car, getting lost upstate, like, the different things that they can, that they did together. Um, autumn leaves falling down, like, pieces into place, and I can picture it after all these days. She's descriptive, you know, the wind in my hair, I was there, I remember it all too well. She's talking about, like, being haunted, too, by these memories and this relationship that she was potentially gaslit in, and... I mean, I know what that feels like. And to be basically kind of feeling like, well, was this real? You know, she says, you kept me like a secret, but I kept you like an oath. You know, she loved this person very much. And, you know, she remembers it all too well. But does he, you know, just between us, do you remember it all too well? And even at the end of the song, she, people say it's like a cop out, right? Because the last minute is repetitive. Wind in my hair. I was there. I was there. Down the stairs, I was there, I was there. Sacred prayer, I was there, I was there. It was rare. You remember it all too well. You could argue, basically, in that moment, like, she is basically trying to say, like, I was there, I was there. I felt these things. Like, do you, I remember it all too well. Like, he made her, gaslit her, basically, into believing that maybe it wasn't real what she was feeling, but she knows in her heart of hearts that she felt what she felt and she knew that what they had was real and that he felt it too even if he wanted to deny it she's repetitively saying it to herself to kind of solidify like yes this was real even if he tried to play it off like it was nothing i personally love the acapella version where it just gets very quiet uh, at the heiress tour and she just sings it Wind in my hair, i was there i was there I get chills every time. But also, let's talk about the fact that she did a 10-minute short film with Sadie Sink. And the acting in it, absolutely incredible. Very believable. Very raw. Very emotional. I cry, like, every time I watch it. It's so good. I could probably go on and on about this song, but then we'd have, like, at least another 10 minutes to this video. <laughs> See what I did there? It's not a lie either. Number two has got to be The Best Day. This one holds a very special place in my heart and has to be my number two because this is mine and Michelle's song. Now, I know that this song is actually about Taylor and her mom, but I feel like this song could also be like a song about sisters, like an elder and younger sister. And that's exactly what this song is to me and Michelle. So this song, when she was younger, I kind of just heard the song for the first time and I automatically pictured our relationship. It's another really descriptive song that kind of gets into kind of more specific details, but a lot of these specific details are really relatable. Like for me, it's relatable for both me and her. For example, where she says, I'm 13 now and I don't know how my friends could be so mean. I come home crying and you hold me tight and grab the keys and we drive and drive until we found a town far enough away and we talk in window shop till I've forgotten all their names. I don't know who I'm going to talk to now at school, but I know laughing on the car ride home with you. It just makes me think of all the times that I went home upset about things that happened at school or vice versa and we had each other, you know, and we would go on trips together and we would go window shopping together and make music videos together and just kind of have our own little world. When she graduated from middle school um, and I was in high school, I made a little music video with photos of us growing up together and things um, with this song and then at my wedding she did the same thing and she used different pictures and found videos that I didn't even know existed of the two of us and it was it was just beautiful and so the best day is mine and Michelle's song and so that's why it's my number two it's the age of princesses and pirate ships and the seven dwarfs daddy's smart and you're the prettiest lady in the whole wide world and now i know why all the trees change in the fall i know you were on my side even when i was wrong
Now, before I get into my number one, I suppose I should mention my honorable mentions. This is in no particular order, but my honorable mentions go as follows. <laughs> I have like seven honorable mentions. <laughs> um, I'll make it quick. I bet you think about me. Because that's a very satisfying song for similar reasons as to why Betty is a very satisfying song. Uh, New Year's Day, I think it's one of the most romantic songs in her discography. Just the idea of just being there, you know, not just for the par- like for the party with the person that you love, but also being the one to pick up afterwards and to be there for, for the not so glamorous moments. I think that's a very beautiful sentiment getaway car because it's an absolute bop and i am a rep girl by so many means i'm also a red girl don't get me wrong but the getaway car is amazing the man for obvious reasons i mean the man (laughs) is brilliant that's all i'm gonna say would have could have should have because the lyricism in that one is stained glass windows in my mind I regret you all the time. What? Death by a Thousand Cuts, because the bridge in that one is amazing. And lastly, Ready For It, because Ready For It is just iconic. She used it for her opening for the reputation part of the Eras Tour, as well as the opening song for the reputation tour. And it's just epic. It's just an epic song. So yeah, drum roll, please. The song that is my number one is the song that actually kind of solidified me as a Swifty. I was a Swifty already before this, but the song, this, this was like, oh yeah, like I will never not be a Swifty after the song was released and I first heard it. It's, it's a song that a lot of people skip for obvious reasons um it's a it's a song that i personally have a hard time listening to but yet it's my favorite um because it's so emotional because it's it's just it's a beautiful song people will name like any other song like any other song they'll name like last kiss or all too well or bigger than the whole sky or you're losing me as one of her as her saddest songs they are some of her saddest songs but this song is her saddest song she's ever written it's why nobody can listen to it but because it what it does to me that song i think is her most brilliant song is actually ronin her song ronin is a song that she wrote with the woman who was a mother of a little boy who passed away from cancer at the age of four years old now as a mother of a four-year-old currently um that song kills me it's my favorite song on my list it's my number one because of just what it meant to me when it came out that song came out around the time that i lost a good friend of mine her name was madeline musto she was a beautiful little girl around the same age as ronan was when she was diagnosed with cancer very suddenly um and she passed away only a few days later after her diagnosis I grew up babysitting this little girl, and so losing her was really, really hard on me. I ended up naming my second born after her um, because she was literally the most perfect kid, and I loved her so much. So around the same time that that happened, Taylor released the song Ronin, and she wrote this song after reading Maya's blog, and she wrote her in as the co-writer to this song. She took the words from Maya Thompson's vlog and she turned it into something beautiful. She's only sang it a couple of times. The first time she sang it was at the Stand Up to Cancer event. I'm sure there wasn't even a dry eye in the room when she sang that song. She's done maybe a couple times on tour, but that's about it. Anytime you listen to that song, a portion of the proceeds goes to the Ronin Foundation, which is beautiful to me. Um, So I can never... I sometimes skip it. I I, I can't help it. But I know not, but I try not to because I know that money does go towards that beautiful foundation in his honor. Um, And I just think it's a beautiful thing that she's done. Um, And she has forever solidified his memory in 
a, a song, a beautiful song about him and the, her, the mother's memories of this little boy. And I, every time I listen to that song, I cry. Um, which is why I, I can't always listen to it, but it's, it's, it's my number one because it helped me get through the loss of my friend Madeline. I want to take this moment to let you guys know about the Ronin Foundation as well as the Maddie's Mark Foundation, um, which the Maddie's Mark, Mark Foundation is a foundation that I'm close to because of Maddie or Madeline Musto. Um, they create best days ever for children, which is kind of like a miniature, like make a wish type of foundation. Um, another reason why Michelle and I love best day is because of the title because it makes us both think of Madeline and creating best days ever and her and I were also both very close to Madeline. So I'm gonna put a link to the foundations both those foundations in the description if you want to donate or um, look into them some more they both do really great things and yeah the song Ronin made me respect Taylor just so much. People say that Taylor only ever writes about breakups but um, let's look. In my top 10, I, I named one out of my top 10 of one song that was based off of a breakup. Everything else was fictional, about anxiety, about mental health, about just stories she's made up. You know, people, people like to just write her off as like bubblegum pop and it annoys the heck out of me because from everything that I've seen, it seems like she's a really good person. I really hope that one day I get to meet her. It's on my bucket list. We'll see. But everything I've heard is that she's a really kind person. And I mean, how can you not be if you've written a song like Ronin? Really, really though. So there we have it. That is my top 10 favorite Taylor Swift songs and some of the reasons as to why I'm such a big Taylor Swift fan. If you guys like this video, please give it a like. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel, please. It helps me out a lot. And um, let me know in the comments, what are your favorite Taylor Swift songs? And what would you like to see from me in terms of future Taylor Swift videos? Let me know. Until next time, my name is Luna TK, and I hope you guys have a awesome day. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, there's plenty of ways to show it. You can give me a like, a comment, subscribe, or ring the bell for notifications. You can also follow me at LunaT93 for updates, and you can check out previous content right there. Until next time!